social behavior mm. in general. And whether that's how we act towards each other um, individually or how we act as a society or how we act as an individual in society, I think those are the things that I'm really, really interested in. Mm -hmm. I keep going back to that mm -hmm. and the things that drive our behavior. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was working with the landscape um, and the environment, I was really interested in how people were acting in the environment. Mm -hmm. We would go to a national park. And so I'm, and I'm an observer. Mm -hmm. I've always been, even as like a kid. A tourist. Yeah, like I just... I like to watch what people are doing and sort of get the flavor of the moment and see what's going on. And even as a kid, that's what I did. I was always kind of watching, like, what's everybody doing and what's the feeling in the room right now and all of those things. So um, you're right. It does feed off of that. I mean, really, this isn't so far off from my thesis work to be really different. Even mm -hmm. though I wanted it to be, it sort of came back around to being about, you know, ourselves and how we act around each other and our belief systems and um, the things that drive our behavior that we don't we're not even aware of that drive our behavior that's where the sneaky marmot came in mm. um, it's sort of a, a stand-in for the beliefs that we have and the ideas that we hold that drive our behavior but that we're completely unaware of mm. so whether that's been something that's been handed down um, from our families through the generations or whether it's something that we just latch on to ourselves mm. or that is passed on through society and social beliefs and norms mm. um, and it's interesting as to like how much it does drive our behavior that we don't even see um, so and that does it dovetails in with the, the work I did in my thesis work mm. uh, how we behave in the parks and how disconnected we are from nature out as a society and we don't really know what to do when we get there. Mm. A lot of us don't. Um, and uh, so it's kind of all along that same thread. I see. And I'm not sure I'll ever be able to get away from it. Like the next body of work I'm thinking about, I want to make giant rag dolls okay. for more installation work than right. painting. Um, and oh, I don't think I can even flesh out what the, the whole idea is right now, but dealing with again personal beliefs and how that affects okay. even how we appear physically sometimes mm. um, yeah also there's also kind of a historical thing going too mm -hmm. it's like you're talking like about history I feel because you have this kind of you know slice yes you know in time I don't want to say it's all in the same time period but you know like even how you dress and the, mm -hmm. the stylized bicycles Yes. And, you know, this is, I don't know, it's kind of a familiar, I don't want to say this one exactly, but maybe the, the one on that wall with the, the leaf in the air. Right. Um, seems very kind of commercially, mm -hmm. but kind of not currently now. Mm -hmm. um, like they're iconic poses. Yeah. Um, that come to us from the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And they're not all from the same time period. Like some people are from the 20s, some mm -hmm. are from the 40s, you know, it's, so they're sort of spread throughout time. And I, for me, that's the reference back to the things get, that get handed down mm -hmm. through the generations. And mm -hmm. whether it's the iconic idea of that we look more beautiful when we stand on our toes, mm -hmm. and this is the iconic pinup girl mm -hmm. pose, um, and how women think about their bodies and mm -hmm. how they think about their worth. Those kinds of things, those get passed down from mother to daughter to mother to daughter to right. mother to daughter, and they go way back. And um, so, using people from the past is a way for me to reference that idea. But they're also in these timeless landscapes. Mm -hmm. So, the landscape doesn't give any indication of what time period it That's is. That's true. That's true. And so, I'm using the landscape as a way to think about how. Yes, certain behaviors get passed down through the generations, but yet there are also just plain human tendencies of mm. things that we do to try to protect ourselves. And they may be really dysfunctional, but really, as human beings, it's, we've been behaving a certain way for a really long time. Mm. And it doesn't necessarily tie to one time period or one family. No, I think right, that's what that makes, it more, it makes it more fun for me, man, uh -huh. I think. And so you have these really great sayings on uh, on all of the, the individual pieces here. 
um, that must have been kind of a really, I don't know when I work with my work, when I think of the name or like if I do use words on it, I, it it's, it's a personal thing for me. Mm -hmm. That's where I feel like if anybody is going to possibly understand, mm -hmm. if I can even understand, you know, right. my personal thing, yep. um, that would, I guess for me, that I guess that would be it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, for me, um, well, obviously the text started out really large, mm. and it fits this painting because she's sort of performing this task that is very public. Mm. So what she's doing is in big letters, and you notice the text right away. Mm -hmm. Whereas in other paintings, the text is not as easily found. Right. Um, almost like it's so it's something we shouldn't know, but that we do find out when we look closely. Fine print. Yeah. And, and some, it's more than others. Like this one, you can see the text from across the room with mm -hmm. the red sky. But when you look at the muscle guy, you have to look for that text. You actually have to get up close to be able to see it. Yeah. It's like a disclaimer. A disclaimer. I don't know if that's uh, how you want to use it. Yeah, that could be it. Or um, it's like you're finding something out about the figure in the painting that maybe the figure doesn't necessarily want you to know about them. Mm. Um, and the sneaky marmot, you know, representing things that are, are hidden and not so obvious. So the text sort of plays along with that role, I that see. idea.